Well, did I do it? Did I trade my current models of both my Rolex Explorer 2 and my Rolex Submariner Date for a beautiful Vacheron Constantin overseas dual time watch? Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I truly do appreciate it. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer who depends on his tool watches when I'm out in the field, whether it be timing my hikes or timing my exposures. Tool watches are an intricate part of my photography process. Now, quick recap, if you didn't see my last video, about a month ago or so, I was approached by one of my art collectors who wanted to make a trade for my Rolex Submariner, my Rolex Explorer 2, and my new art piece, Echoes of the Desert, for his beautiful, amazing, well-crafted VC overseas dual time with the white dial. Now, usually, if, you, if you've seen my other videos, my Rolex watches are beloved by me. I would never really ever think about getting rid of them. But it was one of those things where the overseas, the VC, the Everest version is my grail watch. I always wanted that watch, but they only made 150 of them, I believe. And so, and now on the secondary market, I think they're going for over $90,000. So I will never get that watch. The one my collector was offering me is kind of the one step below, the closest I'll really ever be able to get to my Grail watch. So that's really where this came about, where I started thinking and really took this offer seriously. I've been on the road now for about a month or so, maybe not quite that long, but that's, I apologize for the scruff here and everything. We literally got back last night from traveling throughout, what was it, Utah and Arizona photographing. I was living in a camper van for a while. So that explains the scruff. And we have those videos. They're coming out over the next couple of weeks. I think we already released the Zion National Park one. But anyway, I met the collector to look at the watch this morning. And now I have come to my decision. First off, thank you so much to all of you who commented and gave your input. I took it all very seriously. But I was also very surprised about I get so many comments throughout my other videos, I need to review more watches. And in a perfect world, I'd love to. But people don't really want to give me their watches to go get beat up out in the field, out in nature. Looking at your comments, it was really overwhelming for me to keep the two Rolex watches and keep doing videos on those. And I, that was, again, that really surprised me. I was expecting a lot of you to jump on to see a new, especially very luxury watch being put to the test out in the field. And I really did think about it on the road. It was on my mind constantly. Hiking through the Narrows is kind of that took that calming time to really go over it. So let's go over real quick. The two Rolexes, obviously there's two of them. So that's a big plus to keep two watches. Other than that, you know, the Rolex are probably a little bit more durable, more built for this. There are actually two, which I'm surprised about. I, re I reached out to, I'm surprised a lot, it seems like. I reached out to a lot of owners, some of my other collectors have VC overseas watches, and I reached out to them. They're not certified for their accuracy. And I mean, they have some kind of certification, but I think it's more of the Geneva thing, which is more for finishing quality. And a lot of them were saying their watches are about three to four seconds off a uh, perfect time a day, which is still incredible watchmaking. But both my Rolexes, when I'm wearing them, they're pretty much darn day accurate. It's incredible. And I mean, at most they're a second off a day and that's usually kind of when they're sitting around not being used. So the Rolexes were really, they were leading the scorecard pretty much, so to speak, in my mind, it just always kind of kept leaked back to my grail watch. This might be the one and only opportunity to get pretty much my grail watch. 
Another tiny thing about the overseas that I didn't like is it doesn't have hacking seconds. And me being kind of a nerd geek on precision, that did bother me because I really much, very much enjoy setting my watch exactly to, you know, the Navy clock, exactly the time. And just over the, you know, the days, weeks, months, just see how much precision it does have, how much it's lost over that time. I really kind of, I geek out on that. It's kind of interesting to me how accurate a watch is depending on if I'm using it or not. And I just couldn't do that with the overseas. I couldn't set the precise exact time, which on the Rolex is, is quick and easy to do. I like to pride myself in precision, especially in my photography. And a tool that I'm using that isn't exactly precise would kind of not me in a geeky kind of dorky way, but it would bother me knowing that this watch isn't exactly accurate because I can't set it hacking seconds to be exactly accurate. And again, that, that would not me after a little bit of time, I think. Having the overseas in my hand this morning, pictures, videos, like most watches, as you know, pictures and videos just don't do it justice. This watch is absolutely beautiful. The finishing second to none, absolutely incredible. And just the feel, it feels, the Rolexes are more kind of a rough and tumble. They do have the finishing to them, but not even nowhere close to what VC has on this overseas watch. But that really kind of hit it home for me right then and there. When I noticed that having the watch in my hand, I did, I decided to stick with my two Rolex watches. Not taking anything away from the overseas watch. I mean, it's the absolute peak of watchmaking and is a superior watch in a lot of ways to the Rolex watches. If anything, this experience has grown my journey as a watch collector because now knowing how great the overseas is, I do need one and want one in my collection and will have one in my collection. It might be a couple years, but I have absolutely fallen in love with the overseas watch. In the end, what it really came down to was the finishing. And for me personally, the finishing, don't get me wrong, it's tremendous. Well, I would love to own a watch like that one day, but it's just not on the top of my list for what I want in a watch. It's more kind of accuracy, toughness, memories. And my Rolexes have all that in abundance. So yes, the, the VC, the overseas is three times the price of one of my Rolex watches. So I got, I heard a lot in the comments, we'll get it and then sell it and then get the Rolex watches back. That could have been done. It's not, and yeah, put down the comments too. Everyone's saying the Explorer 2 and the Samariner Rolex are so easy to get and they're so cheap now. Let me know where, because I'm still seeing them, you know, the Rolex Explorer 2 with the polar dial is still going for about 11 to 12,000. And the Submariner is going for a little bit more than that. And the wait list times are still around a year for both of them, a little bit more for the sub. So I'm, I'm located in Southern California, so it might be a totally different world than other places. So please, yeah, let me know. But the memories, proven toughness of the Rolex really ended up making up my mind. And again, having two of them, it was just a nice, it's a better situation for me to be. I just, uh, it, was, it was definitely tough having the overseas in my hand and saying no. But Ah, oh, man, it's it, it, it was a fun journey. It was a little stressful at times, which I didn't need it to be watch collecting, which this channel's kind of a little bit moving towards. It, it's, it's a fun journey and it's really about the journey, not the finishing point I'm learning with watch collecting. And this was fun to think about. There's so many pluses and minuses for both sides. So it was definitely a fun experiment, I guess you can call it, to really see where I wanna go with my watch collecting career and where I am now and maybe now is good because I it really came down to and I heard a lot of comments again from you that that you want to see how these Rolexes handle long-term use and that's I'll give you that these watches especially after making this decision this morning to keep the two Rolexes I think that's a pretty much end period that I will never get rid of these two Rolexes they will always be with me and they're going to get 
beat to hell and I'm gonna use them as they were intended and designed to be used. So let's see, to more of that. And again, thank you so much for all the comments. I really do appreciate it. There was so much insight. I really had fun diving into all three of these watches, really doing the research and just not so much the money for me. It's just what I need in a watch. And the Rolex is just really in the end, we're really up here for usage and what I need them for in my career. But thank you again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we have some more travel stuff coming out with the Rolex watches. I think the next one coming out next week is the Grand Canyon with my Rolex Explorer 2. And we got some more, yeah, well, oh geez, we got some more travels. I'm already exhausted, we just got back. We got some more travels coming up here shortly and we'll have videos and then the Rolex watches and there will be a new watch appearing. It might be a couple months, but I'm gonna be testing it. And will I keep it, will I not? That's gonna be in the channel. That's something for you to look forward to in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.